بسم الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين ما بعد uh, in the previous session we took a look at using المكتبة الشاملة and also الجامع التاريخي تفسير القرآن الكريم uh, both of which are softwares that you can download and are very useful uh, the last one is for tafsir in particular and al-jam al-tarikhi is for tafsir in particular whereas the uh, first one al-maktab al-shamila is very useful for tafsir and also for other ulum shara'iya it's not specific to tafsir but obviously going to be very useful for you in your uh, tafsir studies Uh, okay, so now what we want to look at next is it is a website for Qan.co or tafsir.app. Qan.co. As you, you'll see that it's immediately redirected me to tafsir.app. Uh, that is their domain name now that they're using. Um, so this is a website that has basically it's a website. You can access a bunch of different seeds and some other resources. Uh, we'll just take a look at them. Um, there also is an app for this website. Um, uh, you know, I have an Android phone, so I use it on my phone uh, as an Android app. I think there's an there's an app for iPhone as well. Uh, so you can actually use this as an app on my on my phone. I use this a lot. I use it as an app. It's convenient. Um, it's something that you can pull up in the middle of the class uh, when you need to look something up. Uh, just generally, um, it's it's fairly convenient. So, for example, I can type in a word that I'm looking for. You know, now with Samad, because the word name as Samad only be, is the only place where the letters Saad, Meem, Dal, like that in a word together in sequence come up, it automatically Pulled up Allah Samad. But if I search, for example, um, Al Rahman, so that there's a whole bunch of options that have come up, and I can just pick one. Uh, it doesn't show more than 15 when there's there's more than one. So you have to have an idea of what you're looking for when the, when you when you're entering something in uh, in in the uh, tafsir section. But um, let's let's go with summit. So Allah summit. Uh, so it's automatically selected here. Al Ikhlas Surah Two. That's also if you know the surah and verse number, you can also use use this to get to it. Uh, so basically, this is this has a a decent collection of different tafsirs. Um, it's not comprehensive. Al Jamia Tarihi has more tafsirs. Um, the Shamil also has more tafsirs, but nonetheless, this is convenient and so can be useful at times. So uh, you can just click one. This is, text comes up. Uh, this is Ibn Juzay. This come up. Note that he's actually got all four verses in one section. That will vary from tafsir to tafsir. So tahrir al tanwir for example, is just Allah Samad. Discussion is just Allah Samad. Um, you'll notice he's got this here, tafsir Shaykh al-Islam al The downside of this is, as you see here, mulahada futih al-kitab in da'awwadihi la in the ayat al-muqdara yuslahu hadha qareeban insha'Allah. So he has basically a text, he has a PDF file up. He doesn't have the text file up for this work. Which is a collection of uh, basically tafsir material from Ibn Taymiyyah. Uh, you'll note here that tafsir, tafsir Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyyah is not available, and that's probably because he doesn't have a particular entry for him at verse 2. Let's go to verse 1. Verse 1, he does. So he's got this nice discussion from Ibn Qayyim for verse 1. But uh, when you go to the next verse, it automatically goes to Allah with the Fala. This is something that was compiled from writings of Ibn Qayyim. Uh, it's not a complete verse here. So, 
okay, so that is uh, now with regards to the let's just take a look quickly. We have he has the you'll not Tafsir ibn Abi Hatim is not available here either. That's because the collected uh, Tafsir ibn Abi Hatim is incomplete. Um, and although it's worth noting that they don't have Tafsir ibn Abi Hatim for um, Surah Al Ikhlas in this printed edition that has been used for for the, the book here. But uh, for example, uh, Ibn Taymiyyah has a tafsir of Surah Al-Ikhlas, a very lengthy tafsir of Surah Al-Ikhlas, in which he quotes large passages of tafsir Ibn Abi Hatim. So that's something that they could have added. I don't know if the present edition, the latest edition of uh, tafsir Ibn Abi Hatim has actually uh, added that. I think I'm going to check. Go ahead and check. Okay, that does not, in fact, have that. Um, let's see. I can show you guys. Uh, that over there. Um, you don't even see it like that. Okay. This is new edition of Tafsir of Nabi Hatim um, from Darik Josie. I was hoping that uh, they would have done istidraq of those parts of, uh, of the Tafsir that are actually have been quoted by Bidenia, but they have not done so. Um, but in any case, that's fine. Um, okay, so that is right. So just quickly taking a look at the list of the series they have in the collection of uh, contemporary the series. They have Al Muyassar, Al Mukhtasar, Tafsir Al Karim Al Rahman, Tafsir Al Saadi, Tafsir Al Tafsir Al Quran, Tafsir Al Amal. Tafsir al Quran al Karim of Ibn Uthaymeen, which is not covering the whole of the Quran, but selected surahs. Uh, the, the way that they've organized it is a little bit odd. So you have Tafsir Murakkazatu al Ibarah, Lugha wa Balagha, Athar, Abdur al Mansur, and Ibn Abi Hatim, Tafsir Amma, Muntaqa, Jamal al Aqwal, Mosu'ad, Tafsir Amma, uh, and Ummahat. Uh, and I mean, his selection of Ummahat is Al Tabari ibn Kathir, Al Qurtubi, and Al Baghul. I mean, I find that uh, that categorization a little bit odd. But um, regardless, uh, it's a good work, it's useful. There are some works that I would like to see here. I mean, for example, Sayyid Qutub's uh, Tafsir is not here. But from what I understand from some people who know the uh, the brother that has set up the website he is not going to be including uh, the Tafsir of Sayyid Qutb due to ideological commitments that he has um, but there are other things that he can add and inshallah I've actually tried suggesting someone that knows him that uh, he makes some suggestions because apparently this brother is, is working to improve the work uh, improve this his website so uh, there's the tafsir, anyways, there's the tafsir section. Um, it has a lot of the major tafsirs. Uh, there's this ulum section, which has collections of books, gharib wa ma'an. What is known as, the, the books that are known as ma'ani al-Quran by this title, oftentimes many of them 
are actually dealing with um, this, this. This is basically a genre of uh, linguistic commentaries. So you have the Ma'an al Quran of, of as a judge. Ma'an al Quran of Nahas, but Ma'an al Quran of Nahas, I believe, is actually incomplete, and that is why there is no sort of class. Ma'an al Quran of Al Farra, Majaz al Quran of Abu Abeda, Ma'amar ibn Muthanna, Ma'an al Quran of Al Akhfash. This is, so these are early third century to fourth century uh, common, uh, commentaries by linguists. Uh, then there is a section on Arab. So this is a collection of books on Arab al Quran, amongst which he also has Arab al Quran of Al Nahas. So Al Nahas actually has a number of works. He has Arab al Quran, he has his Ma'ani al Quran, he has a book on Al Nasikh wal Mansukh. Possibly something else that is not slipping my mind. All of them Quran related and uh, they're important and valuable works. Um, this is Al Lubab of Ibn Adil. Al Lubab is oftentimes um, you know, put amongst tafsir, but yeah, it has a lot of the Arab as well. Uh, although I think his Arab, for the Arab part, I think he may have taken it straight from uh, Asamin al Halabi. I think he has a Samin al Halabi and a few other works that he is taking straight from, uh, with little ad that he adds of his own, but um, you know, it's a reference that's there. Uh, there's this Qiraat section. So, note Al Qiraat, there's this Mosu'a, uh, which does not limit itself just to the well known 10 reciters. Um, you know, it mentions a recitation here. It says here, Qiraat Aban ibn Uthman, Zayd ibn Ali, Nasr ibn Asim ibn Sirin, Al Hasan ibn Abi Ishaq, Abu Amr, fi Riwayat Yunus wa Mahbub, Wal Asma'i, Wal Lu'lu'i, Wa Ubaid, Wa Harun. So these are a lot of well known uh, early reciters that are you know, not just limited to the, the, the 10. Um, again, what the options that are available are depending on what verse you're looking at. So for the Qiraat stuff, um, I guess let's go to go to Sufifat uh, Maliki Yomidin or Maliki Yomidin, all of them are now available. You can check what they have to say. Um, so this I find useful, the, the Arab section and these books of Ma'ani, which are basically also you know, linguistic commentaries. These are, are referred to as well, as well as the Tafsir works. Uh, this Musahif section is nice. I, I, mean, I don't use it a whole lot, but um, you can, for example, um, here is a Musahif of Warsh. Look at that page at Duri. This is the, of course, the Mujamma print of the Musahif. Uh, this is something that is more important dictionaries. Uh, so for example, if you're looking for the word summit, by searching for the root, you, you can bring up all of these entries. Uh, so summit, let's say we want to look at Maqayis al Lugha because Maqayis is very important for looking at the, the meaning of the root. Uh, and you'll note that he, every 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 entrance, every entry, every word in the entry that is from that root is highlighted. So that is useful. Al Mujmal Istiqaqi, of course, is uh, we discussed it in the previous video. It's an important contemporary work. You have the Mufradat of Al-Raghib, which of course is uh, extremely important. Umnatul um, Hafad of the Samin al-Halabi is also a very important uh, Quranic dictionary. And it builds on Al-Raghib. And then he's got some of these general dictionaries, as sihah of Al-Jawhari, Bisan al-Arab of Ibn Manbur, Busairu al Dawit Tamiz of Al-Fayruz Abadi. One thing I would like to see is that for him to add Tahdib al Lugab al Azhari and Al Ain of Al Khalil ibn Ahmed and really the major uh, dictionaries. Of course, Al Tajul Arus, Tajul Arus. This Al Arab is very good to have, but Tajul Arus would be, would be good. Um, 
this would be more complete. This is useful for, you know, when you're re researching the meaning of a word. Uh, particularly if you're researching quickly, uh, in, you know, the, the, the major references more or less that you would need are here. Uh, I would, I would like to see Tadul Urus at least uh, added, um, as well as the other you know, major dictionaries that would make it more useful. But um, also, you know, just if you're on the run um, and you need to look up a word and you need to check a dictionary, this is an app that can fulfill that function. There were actually some dictionary apps that I was using before, and it was called Arabic Almanac. Um, that was quite good, but the app hasn't been updated in quite a while, and so it no longer works on my phone after uh, since last year or so. So I haven't really been using it any longer. But this is this is one resource. This website it's called, as you can see, Al Bahith Al Qurani. The link, the um, the URL is tafsir.app or furqan.co. Um, okay, another resource that is useful, um, islamawakened.com. You know, what this does is that you can actually pick a particular verse and look at a whole bunch of different translations of that verse. So this is quite a lengthy list of translations he has. It's useful to look at um, particularly verses where the meaning is not quite so clear. You're not quite clear on how to translate something. It can be useful to look at how have different translators translated it. Possibly how do those different translations actually reflect different interpretations of the verse um, and so forth. Uh, the downside of this, uh, no, I find this is better because this actually has a lot more uh, translations than Quran.com does. Quran.com gives you a handful of translations. This website actually gives you a whole bunch of translations. The downside is um, that if you want to look, you know, read through a group of verses, you're going to have to do it manually, one by one. And that is where Quran.com in. Quran.com is more useful if, if you're in a hurry and you want to look at a bigger chunk of Quran uh, with less options for translation. So let's just pick a surah. Um, from here to settings, translations, and then click all of them. This I find a little bit. Um, uh, of a nuisance that every time I do it, I have to actually click all of them. Transliteration, I'm not interested in. Uh, and so this is the whole of the surah, wal mursalati orfa, the different translations, falasfa, yasfa. So they're all on one page. The entire surah is on one page. And I can look at verse by verse, the different translations of it. And I have a good selection of translations. Uh, Mustafa Khattab's clear Quran, which for whatever reason has been produced twice. Uh, Mustafa Khattab, Ghali, Mohsin Khan, Pikthal, Sahih International, uh, Yusuf Ali, uh, Taqi Usmani, Abdul Halim, uh, Maududi from his tafsir, from the translation of his tafsir, it's not actually his translation of the Quran, uh, because he wrote his work in Urdu and had, has been translated in English. But uh, I mean, from my experience, I found that is the, this translation is fairly well done. Modudi's translation, also Takus Mani's translation. This is both, both are well done. Um, yeah, so basically, um, this is useful uh, when you're teaching or studying to look at different translations to see how have uh, basically basically all that discussion of what is the interpretation of this verse that you might be reading in Arabic. Okay, well, you know. One question that may come up is, uh, how are you going to express that in English? And so it can be interesting to take a look at how different um, 
translators have, uh, how they've dealt with this. And you will find at times that, in fact, um, different uh, translations are, in fact, uh, a reflection of different interpretations of different Mufassiri. So one translator has, in fact, chosen one particular interpretation. One translator, another translator has chosen a different interpretation, and each has based his, um, his uh, translation on a different interpretation. Some might do a better job of capturing the meaning of, uh, of coming up with the right wording to capture the meaning of a particular uh, interpretation. Um, another th nice thing here is that for Modudi, you see these footnotes. There's not actually anything there, but some, okay, no, it is coming up. Yeah, so this is his, his commentary. You can actually just click on it and see his commentary on that verse like this. So that is, is useful um, if, you are, if you are using this and you have something you want to commentary on. Uh, so that is also something that is useful to use. Um, okay, then there is this, I don't really know what this word is supposed to be, ijtal.net. Um, you have here the Arabic almanac. Um, to be honest, what I use this for, there's, there's actually a whole bunch of dictionaries here. Uh, you have Lane's lexicon as well as the supplement to Lane's lexicon. Uh, Hans Ware is here as well. Uh, Hans Ware is you know, it's a useful dictionary for general use. Uh, maybe not as much when you're dealing with Tafsir. Uh, Lane's lexicon is actually an extremely important work, um, extremely useful for students. So if you are studying, and again, you can enter a root letter, you can enter them in, as you can enter them in English or Arabic, see the about section. So I don't know how they would distinguish between uh, seen and sought, but they must have some notation. But if you enter the root letters in Arabic, it automatically in all of these dictionaries take you to where that entry is, including some of these Arabic dictionaries, like the San Arab, uh, there's another English one, another English one. Uh, this is one that was, uh, I think this is the one that was done by Abdul Hadim um, with someone else. Um, it obviously has been taken down due to copyright issue. But I think you can still find that on PDF. Uh, not that I use it a great deal. There's this dictionary and glossary of the Quran by Penrise. This is a nice small book, but um, he's basically taken, what he's done is he's just taken the Quranic words and looked at Lane's lexicon and given you a short entry for them. Uh, this is a book of Kavir of the Holy Quran. Uh, so you can see there's a bunch of them here. There's this book, Verbal Idioms of the Quran by um, uh, Mustan Sirmir. This is a, a, a decent work. Uh, now you're getting some of the other ones, some of them in different languages. This one is in Urdu. Uh, no, this is another one in Urdu. I think this is actually an Urdu translation of Al-Raghib. Uh, I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. So some of you might find that useful, to be honest with you. Uh, when I use this website, the only thing I use it for is Lane's Lexicon. Almost entirely the only thing that I look at here for Lane's Lexicon. Lane's Lexicon is very nice because basically what Lane did, he wrote this... Uh, this dictionary, a very comprehensive dictionary of the Arabic language over the course of something like 40 years. And I think, you know, in the introduction, I think maybe it's his son who says that, um, that his father, uh, when he was working on this, he worked on it continuously without taking a day off, except I think maybe he says Sundays, that even I'm not sure about, and Easter and Christmas. He's not taking any special breaks except Easter and Christmas. 
is working continuously in Cairo. So this is an Englishman in the 19th century, mid 19th century came and basically settled in Cairo and worked on this continuously for, um, for four decades. Uh, and basically what he did was he wanted to make a comprehensive dictionary of the Arabic language. And so um, he attempted to collect together the manuscripts, some manuscripts of Taj al Urus, basically being the most comprehensive dictionary of the Arabic language there is. At the time, you know, these books, they weren't printed, so he was getting copies, he was getting um, uh, he was getting hold of the manuscripts and having them transcribed for him, and he had difficulty getting hold of some of them because people were hesitant to give them to him and what have you. Uh, so he managed to get a partial copy of Taj al and then the parts that he was missing, he completed from Lisan al Arab. So basically, he's taken a combination of Lisan al Arab and Taj al and more or less translated it. Um, into English. And so uh, if, you, uh, if you actually look at Taj al or Lisan al Arab, you'll find that this is basically uh, a descriptive translation of the materials that are in there. Um, and so it's, it, it's extremely useful. It can help you to make sense of um, uh, his definition, definitions of things. Sometimes you could read Lisan al-Arab and Taj al-Urus and the definition is still not clear to you. And this is, this is a, a, you know, a very high quality scholarly work that he has done. And since it's in English, you know, what you find unclear in Arabic, you might find uh, clear here in English. This is also an excellent tool for translators who are translating, um, doing academic translations of classical works. Um, it, it can help you find the, the word or expression or to, to devise for yourself the best word or expression for difficult phrases that you're translating. So this is also an extremely useful resource. Um, moving along. This is a website, islamicstudies.info that has uh, the seat of Modudi in English, which I find is oftentimes um, you know, he does a good a good job, sort of to the point of capturing um, important information in the commentary of of the verses. I mean, again, you know, no commentary is perfect, but this is this is an excellent resource. I use this a lot, not a whole lot, but this is something that I use a good bit. Um, and I've actually saved the uh, the link up here on the taskbar so that I can go to it directly. Um, another one is, let's see if we can get here. This is not. Also on islamicstudies.info, they have Ma'arif uh, al-Quran. There's basically, there's a whole, I think you can you can download it. There are other websites that have it up online as well. I think some of these works are also available as apps now for your phone. But um, I tend to use this. So um, basically, you can see that these are these are more or less uh, photocopies of the pages from the book. Uh, so Pixura Alantral. You can pick the verses, bring them up. So you have the verses, translation, commentary. This is another useful to see that is in English that is complete, um, uh, which is useful to use. Uh, I tend to use these two, um, we'll do these more than Ma'arif al-Qur'an, but I use that as well sometimes. I refer to it sometimes. Uh, I tend to use them here on islamicstudies.info. There's another website, uh, Qur'an Wiki. Qur'an Wiki actually has a whole host of features. 
Um, so for example, here you have some linguistic analysis, frequency of the root words used in the surah, um, frequency of root words in this ayah, oh sorry, in this ayah. So this, this, this root, aliha, is used twice in the surah, and it is used 2,851 times in the Quran. I'm actually looking at a particular verse right now. Uh, there is this, um, you can, so these are the things that you can look at. You can look at for a given surah or a given ayah. Uh, lessons, there's these different sections that they've made. Lessons, guidance, reflections, gems, surah overview. You have the surah overview, you have this introduction. Uh, names of surah, the surah, the virtues of the surah special features so you'll know that this is basically because it's a wiki you know a lot of this stuff is is under development uh personally i don't use this much but you might find it useful uh here you'll see that they've also they've reproduced um ibn kathir although it's worth noting that uh the translation of ibn kathir is actually a summary of ibn kathir it is not the full ibn kathir um, a lot of people, they miss this point. Uh, it's something that you should be aware of. Um, in some cases, uh, um, the, in, in, basically the work that they were translating is Al-Misbah Al-Munir Fi Tahdeeb Tafsir Al-Kathir by Safi Rahman Al-Barakuri. So the final work, Although the material and the text is all taken from Tafsir ibn Kathir, it represents the opinions of Safir Rahman al Barakuri, which in some cases his opinion might actually differ from uh, Ibn Kathir, or Ibn Kathir might not have actually committed to a particular opinion. He might have mentioned two different interpretations, and so he's chosen one of them. So don't think that this necessarily in every point represents the actual ikhtiyar of Ibn Kathir, but because you know there's a lot of hadiths and things like that. A lot of that material, if you need to, to verify, uh, if you need to see you know, what hadiths have been mentioned in relation to a particular to the ayah or what have you, or a particular surah, you'll find a lot of them here. Although they've removed the weak hadiths. Uh, so, you know, that's, um, which is okay, but again, you need to be, you need to be aware of, of what the methodology is. Uh, Sayyid Qutb as well. He has here the English. That's nice because I'm not sure if anybody else has. I guess this is Sayyid Qutub on the introduction. You know that he's got some other features here. So like you, you can, for example, um, manuscripts. So you're looking at, at the start of Surah Al-Fatiha. And so these are here are these different manuscripts for which you can actually view. Uh, so, so that is actually nice. That's useful. Um, I suppose um, if you're interested in that or you're trying to research into that, you could. This is useful to see different manuscripts. Um, Period of revelation, background reasons for revelation. And so he has this brief point about the period of revelation. I'm not sure where he's taking this from. This is another downside of this that um, you know, it would be good to know where they've taken that information from. Uh, as period of revelation of given surahs can be a point of of um, Difference of interpretation, uh, not difference of interpretation, difference of opinion. There's differences of opinion sometimes on, on uh, whether a surah is Makki or Madani. And in addition here, they're mentioning specific details about the exact sequencing. Before this, only a few verses were revealed, which form part of Surah Al-Alaq, Surah Al-Muzammin, Surah al Um I think this is, they're taking this from the standard narration of uh, uh, is his name? Jabir ibn Zaid, Abu Sha'atha, 
student of uh, Ibn Abbas. She has a narration which you, the, the surahs, their, their order of revelation, one after the other. Uh, this narration is one that is common in the books of Ulum al Quran and what have you. And so it's oftentimes mentioned, although there are, you know, there are uh, objections to his ordering. So oftentimes when you see when people say, oh, this is the this is surah number 22, but in order of the zoo, that is surah number such and such, oftentimes it's based on that narration. But the order of revelation that is given in that narration is, um, it's certainly not a uh, you know, point of uh, consensus. In any case, this is it is useful. A um, couple of other things left. We'll just go through these quickly. Uh, this is Musuat um, Tafsir al Mawdu'i. You can see, you know, pick a particular entry. Like here, this is Al Akal. Underneath Al Akal, you have Mafum Al Akal. Al Akal for the Al Qurani, Al Al Fadlat, Dat al Sila, Aksam al Ma'pulat. Um, different topics adab uh, al so you can basically you know go to uh, this website mudu'i.com and they have these different entries different topics in which they have had people basically write articles uh, to be honest i've not used this a great deal um, it could be uh, useful when doing research I thought I'd already downloaded it. Save time. Yeah, it's not working. Okay, this is this is fine. Let's see if this opens up. In the meantime, let's go ahead and take a look at this other one. This is at tafsir.com. Uh, tafsir this is uh, from based in Jordan. Uh, I don't use this much, especially not now. But there's a lot of you know a lot of a lot of what they have has sort of been uh, the, the the software is sort of outdated. Uh, but you see that they have a couple of translations of the Quran, including Tahir al Qadri, which is. Anyways, uh, <laughs> um, what they do have, which is nice, is uh, a couple of tafsirs. These are tafsirs that are translated into English. So, for example, you'll see that they have uh, tafsir al is translated in English. Um, let's pick up where it's at random. This is basically the explanation of the verse with the translated into English. Um, again, I don't use this. I don't use the website. Uh, this translation is the translation of Firas Hamza. The translation of Firas Hamza is uh, it's published. Uh, it's available as a book. Um, if you look online, you'll probably find it uh, in PDF form. Um, I would just recommend using that. Uh, some of these other things, they're, they're nice sort of as novelties. I don't really refer to them, to be honest. I mean, I, I suppose, you know, Asbab al Nuzul, if you're looking at the narrations of Asbab al Nuzul, they have a translation of Asbab al Nuzul by Al Wahidi. Um, and you'd have to find the verses that actually have Asbab al Nuzul. Um, so, I mean, if you needed a translation of one of those narrations and it's in the book of Al-Wahidi, this might be useful for that. Um, but, I mean, again, this is not something I use a great deal. Uh, but, you know, you can check it out. You might find it more useful. Uh, this is something that once upon a time people used to use. Um, okay, also just quickly, there is... Um, There's this website, this is called Jam'ul Uh So for example, if you go 
to Maktabat Makkah. Uh, I've, I've, I've already opened the section. Maktoutat Tafsir Maktabat Makkah. There's different Maktoutat. Problem with this is they're not labeled. They're not labeled. So you're going to have to sort of, sometimes some of them are labeled, sometimes they're not. Sometimes they're just by categories. So I think I'd already downloaded one. Actually, uh, the, these guys they have this. They have the uh, the website. Um, they also have the the same owner has uh, uh, he has this channel. It is a Telegram channel. So, for example, he has this book that he's posted up. On the channel, I'm sure you'll find it in his uh, on his website as well. But let's open it. This is it the seed book? No, these are actually he has them as individual image files. So you would want to actually ex I'm not going to do that right now. But you would want to actually extract them into a folder and then use some image viewer to go through them. Uh, so this is, for example, a sort of this is the 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 binding this is the the spine of the book just okay. to throw them up on there Okay. I'm just trying to find the cover page. All right, so this is Al Mujallad Al Awal Min Al Kafil Al Al Kashaf. So this is a commentary on Al Kashaf. Cover page. Al Mujallad Al Awal Min Al Kafil Bi Maani Tanzil Al Kindi. كفيل بمعاني التنزيل وهو التفسير العماد الكندي قاضي إسكندرية النحوي توفي سنة عشرين وسبعمية okay. This is actually a nice, uh, nice uh, manuscript It seems to be picking up right from the beginning of some surah so it seems that he didn't actually write the commentary from the very beginning of the Quran. Bismillah uh, ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wa huwa hasbi wa kafa wa salamun ala ibadihi al-ladhina astafa. Qawluhu ta'ala. Let's watch the video. Let's see the video. Qawluhu ta'ala. Wa idh akhadna mithaqakum al-aya qala al-zimakshari. العمل على ما في التوراة ورفعنا فوقكم الطور إلى قوله خذوا ما آتيناكم وتذكروا واذكروا قلت ذكروا في تفسير الميثاق وجوها أهدها ما عود الله تعالى على العقول You'll notice here um, dots under what we would call now an ألف مقصورة are there to indicate, to, to prevent it becoming mixed up with other letters. Uh, I don't remember exactly the reason for this, but Allah Ta'ala Ila. So there, that's something to be aware of. But, um, you know, sometimes researching, you might want to actually sort of looking at works that are in manuscript form. This, in this case, is something that, uh, this is a work, as far as I'm aware, is not published. Um, it's commentary on al uh, It might be something that is interesting for someone to actually go through and, and see, is it, is it actually something worth publishing? Is there some uh, contribution to the field in publishing a work like this? Otherwise, uh, checking manuscripts can be useful sometimes when you're dealing with works that are difficult to read.
Uh, the last thing that I'm going to look at is Islamic awareness. Islamicawareness.org has various, um, uh, for example, they have articles about different manuscripts of the Quran, uh, other materials that you might find useful. So there's the section on Quranic manuscripts, some other things. Uh, this is a very useful website. Um, that's pretty much it. I think that brings us basically to the end of, of what we want to look at. Does anybody have any questions really quickly before I go? Because it's almost uh, Maghrib time now. Okay, I see. Sorry, I didn't see the the, the chat before. Um, yeah, there's a question you have about Nusakh of a certain tafsir. You can ask whoever that was. Um, um, for Mosuat al Tafsir al Ma'thur, it's available on PDF, so download the PDFs. I can share them uh, in the group and you can um, download them. Or if you Google them, I'm sure you'll probably be able to find it, but I, I'll, sh I'll share them inshallah in the group. That's Mosuat al Tafsir al Ma'thur. Uh, Maududi's tafsir is a fairly brief uh, tafsir, not extremely brief, but it's, it's, it doesn't go into great deal of depth, but it's a nice, you know, uh, mod, uh, mod, modest, medium-sized tafsir. Um, it, he gives you basically a good summary of, of a lot of things that are in the, the, classical, the classical opinions of the Mufassirin. As well as a mix of, um, of of sort of, I guess you could say, modern reflections, and it's written in a generally clear style. Okay, so if there's no other questions, I think we'll wrap up with that. The, the brother uh, Yahya who asked about Nusakh uh, of certain tafsir. If you want to ask your question. Okay. All right, I'm going to wrap up then. Subhanakallah, Allah, Bihamdik. Ashadu Allah, ilaha illa anta, astaghfiru, wa atubu ilayk. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi.